hear ye. The Southern High Court for the Kingdom of Denmark is now in session. All persons having business with this court, draw near and give your attention. Let the record show that the jurors have been impaneled. Lord Hamlet, will hear you please- ye, Hear ye, The Southern High Court for the Kingdom of Denmark is now in session. All persons having business with this court, draw near. Okay, let's start over. Here we go. <laughs> My YouTube was playing back. Okay, here we go. Hear ye, hear ye. The Southern High Court for the Kingdom of Denmark is now in session. All persons having business with this court draw near and give your attention. Let the record show that the jurors have been impaneled. Lord Hamlet, will you please present yourself on screen so that the jurors may see you? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the Kingdom of Denmark has filed charges against Prince Hamlet. Does the defendant have counsel? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor, I'm the defendant's counsel. Prince Hamlet has been charged with the murder of Polonius, the late counselor of the king. How does the defendant wish to plea? The defendant wishes to plead not guilty by reason of insanity, Your Honor. Very well. Your plea of not guilty uh, has been entered into the record. Prosecutor, are you ready to give opening statement? Aye. Okay, you may begin. Lords and ladies of this illustrious court, we have gathered on this day to grant ear and rule in a case regarding the future monarchy of our beloved country, Denmark. Our country mourns as our late King Hamlet passed a roint. God rest his soul. And yet, lords and ladies, we has not gathered on this day to mourn our late King's perpetual wake. Lords and ladies, we has gathered on this day to seek justice. Only a fortnight since, the Prince Hamlet in his perpetual rage and anger, murder the loyal Polonius in his mother's bedchamber. Polonius was merely a bystander on the night in question, but Hamlet in his sore rage and anger murdered that man. On the night in question, the queen had summoned Polonius to her bedchamber to hide behind the tapestry in her chamber to give ear to the conversation between the queen and her son due to the queen's request. But Hamlet in his rage and anger, hearing a man stirring behind the tapestry, stabbed his sword through the tapestry, instantly killing the man. Hamlet is guilty. His blood is on, Polonius's blood is on Hamlet's hands. Lords and ladies seek justice. Find Hamlet guilty. The defense shall try to persuade thou that Hamlet is free of all office due to his seeming insanity. But Hamlet is no madman. He is a crafty, cunning snake, but no madman. Today, through the honest testimonies of Laertes, Gertrude, and Polonius, among others, I will prove to thou, lords and ladies of this court, that Hamlet is guilty. I shall prove that he hath been merely been putting on a false act. Seek justice and find Hamlet responsible for his vile, cruel, and heinous crimes. Good day, honorable judge, jury, and people of the court. My name is Sky Early, and today I'm here to prove the innocence of the defendant Hamlet by reason of insanity. On this day, we will be defining madness as wild, uncontrollable, and excitable. Some synonyms of mad are wild, kooky, and delirious. 
And in order for a murder to take place, you need three things. Motive, means, and opportunity. I will present to you throughout this trial that Hamlet had no motive to murder dear Polonius, but rather twas due to insanity. Our witnesses testifying nothing but truth to you today are Lady Ophelia, Horatio, loyal companion, and defendant Hamlet. Crazy, poor, madness infused Hamlet. I ask that you vote to, for the innocence of Hamlet because of his insanity. Thank you. And I ask that you take each word of my witnesses and I and then capture them in mind today. Prosecution, are you ready to call your first witness? Aye. The prosecution counsel would like to call up Laertes to the stand. Would you please state thy name and thy occupation for the court? My name is Laertes and I am the son of Polonius, whom Hamlet has cruelly murdered. What is, thou, what is thou's relationship with Hamlet the defendant? I hast grown up with that gent in court and am well acquainted with his family. My known sister Ophelia and that gent did once love each other. Where were you on the night of the murder? I was out of the state. I never dreamt that when I departed, it would be the last time I ever laid eyes on my beloved father. How didst thou react to the hearing of the gruesome murder of your father, Polonius? I was stricken with grief and did rush home immediately to seek revenge upon whomever had murdered mine own dear father. My revenge knew no bounds. Has there been any other way that Hamlet has destroyed thy family? As a result of my father's murder, mine own sister, Ophelia, wenteth insane. The lady would singeth riddles and talketh tush-tush. Eventually, her madness did lead her to her death. I tell thee, a ministering angel shall my sister be, why thou lovest howling. How didst Hamlet react at the funeral of your beloved sister, Ophelia? As I was trying to grieve, he attacked me. As we were fighting, he whispered in my ear, I may not be rash or quick to anger, yet I have something in me dangerous, which let thy wisdom fear. I tell thee, he was dangerous. How didst thou feel about Hamlet's actions? Forsooth, they were so vile. I hath asked the king, why didst thou proceed not against these actions, so criminal and capital in nature? The king told me that he would have proceeded against Hamlet's actions with punishment, but had taken no action on account of the queen and the country's adoration of Hamlet. Thank you, Laertes. No further questions. Do you stand ready for cross-examination, Laertes? Yes. Good day, Laertes. How do you do? I'm well. Good. Before we begin, was Hamlet acting normally? It appeared that he was to me. Okay. Let us begin with your father, Polonius. First of all, I'm deeply sorry for your loss of your father and your sister, Ophelia. 
What were your father's and your own opinions of Hamlet before Polonius, your father's life, was taken? Um, we had concerns about him and Ophelia's relationship because we believed that he was not going to be true to her. But besides that, we thought he was normal. Okay, and did you want Ophelia to love Hamlet? No. Why not? Because I did not believe that he would even end up truly loving her. I believed that his first duty was to his country and he would place his love of country before his love of Ophelia. Was there just something about him that you did not want your sister to get wrapped up in? My only concern was that he would place his love of country above his love for her. Okay, and what happened to Ophelia? What caused her death? She was stricken with grief um, about my father's death and therefore wenteth insane and uh, threw herself into a river and drowned. So twas herself that caused her death? It was her insanity. Okay. And do you think she was mad when she died or rather when you saw her before she died? I believe that she was mad when she died. You, you say you did believe, I'm sorry. I, I believe she was mad when she died. Okay. And did you not warn her not to associate with Hamlet? I did. Yes, she did? I did. Oh. Oh, feel you associated with him? Can you repeat your question? Sorry, it's cutting in and out. Yes, she did. Yet Ophelia did associate with him. Okay. And how would you describe Hamlet? Um, let's see. He was always calm and thinking and uh he was very sad after his father's death and that is all I had deserved about him and did you fear Hamlet not particularly all right and when Reagan asked you and I quote uh how did Hamlet react at the funeral of your sister Ophelia do you remember your response Yes. Would you be able to repeat that response for me? Yes. He jumped out of the bushes and attacked me. All right. And I have the book in the exact lines that you have quoted right there. And it says that Hamlet was hiding behind the bushes. He advances towards you and he asks you a question and he says, quote, this I, Hamlet the Dane, and makes himself known to you. And then it says Laertes, coming out of the grave, says, quote, the devil take thy soul. Then it says, they grapple. Does that sound like you attacked Hamlet or he attacked you? I suppose it sounds as if he attacked me. You believe it sounds like he attacked you. And when Reagan asked you, how did ha Hamlet react at the funeral of your sister Ophelia? Do you remember what you called him? I do not. You called him dangerous, is that correct? I did. Okay. And would you not call that mad? I don't believe that dangerous and mad are the same thing. Okay. And how could you call Ophelia mad, but not Hamlet? Well, her actions clearly indicated she was mad. She would walk around singing riddles. Her speech made no sense whatsoever. And then she, when she died, she climbed into a tree and threw herself into a river. Did Hamlet not make sense? Or did Hamlet make sense? All of his actions made sense? His actions did not always make sense, but there seemed to be a motive behind them. Okay. And in Act 5, Scene 1, after Hamlet confessed his love for Ophelia and jumping into the grave with her, you don't happen to remember what King Claudius said in line 288, do you? I do not. He says, and I quote, Oh, he is mad, Laertes. What do you think about that? I suppose that's what the king thought. Do you not agree with that? It would appear that his actions did 
make him seem like he was mad, but I believe that there was a way behind it. And in the end, how did Hamlet die? I killed him. With? A poisoned sword. Twas your poison tip, which you penetrated his own skin with? Yes, because I was responsible for my father's murder, so I wanted to kill him. So it was out of anger? It was out of revenge. No further questions, Your Honor. The prosecution counsel may call their ne next witness to the stand. Thank you. The prosecution counsel would like to call Polonius to the stand. Would you please state thy name and thy occupation for the court? My name is Polonius. I was the chief counselor for Claudius, and I'm the father of Laertes and Ophelia. How dost thou know the defendant? Thy art the chief chamberlain for Hamlet's father, King Claudius. Is King Claudius truly Hamlet's father? Nay, Claudius is really Hamlet's uncle, who ascended to the throne when Hamlet, the king, passed on. Claudius then married Queen Gertrude very shortly after. What is thou's relationship with Hamlet, the defendant? He wanted to marry thine daughter Ophelia, or so it seemed. I am very protective of my daughter. Was wast thou ever summoned by the king and queen regarding Hamlet's behavior? Yes, indeed I was. Hamlet was acting strangely. He was acting mad. The king and queen summoned me so that they may question me on Hamlet's madness and why, what might be provoking it. Dost thou remember what thou said? Yes, I said he was mad. Mad? Mad in love, sir, though he was fighting inner demons of sadness. Is it possible Hamlet may have been mad in other ways? Possibly and probably most certainly he was. Were your suspicions about his behavior ever affirmed or denied? Yes, they were denied in a way. The villain Hamlet pushed away my daughter Ophelia's love claiming he did not love her. So was it truly love that drove his actions or was there something else? There was something else. So do you still think him mad? No, but if it was madness, there would be a method to it. To me, it seemed to be the childish antics of a saddened kid. So there was something else driving his behavior? Yes, indeed, sir. Will you please give us an account of the night of the murder? The night in question, Queen Gertrude and I formed a plan, a plan to summon Hamlet to his, mo to his, mother's, his mother and confront him on his rash behavior. I hid behind the heiress and listened to the conversation. When Hamlet came in and began to accuse his mother of such vile tongue, she began to cry for help. I then also began to cry for help. When Hamlet heard my voice crying from help behind the heiress, he cried, how now, a rat? Dead for a ducat. And then he stabbed me with his sword through the heiress into my body, killing me. This crime is a heinous one. Avenge me. Thank you, Polonius. No further questions. Dear Polonius, do you now stand ready for cross-examination? Yes. Good day, Polonius. How do you do? I do very well, thank you. Please state your relationship to Hamlet. He was wanting to court my daughter, Ophelia. And what did you initially think Hamlet was mad for? It was hard to say. I believe that it was caused by probably the death of his father. Do you, and prior, you did, what else do you think he could have been mad for? He always struck me, struck me as a troubled kid. And I believe that he had many inner demons of sadness. Okay, and did he love Ophelia? I do not believe so, no. Okay. And in Act 5, Scene 1, lines almost 300, I quote from Hamlet, I loved Ophelia. Did you Objection. Think he really loved her? Objection. Hey, prosecutor, you may speak. That's hearsay. Would you like to explain a little further? 
How would I'm, Polonius know the words of Hamlet if Polonius was not present for the words of Hamlet? Defense, how would you respond to that? I'm just trying to clear things up and see, show that, prove a point. All right, um, prosecutor, I'm gonna note that it seems like you have a validity here, but in order to get as much information out, I'm gonna let the defense proceed with her questioning, um, but that was an appropriate objection. Polonius, make sure that you're testifying to what you actually know. You may proceed. So do you think you really loved her? No, I do not. And has Hamlet ever shown aggression towards you? Yes, I mean, he killed me. And were you aware that Hamlet and your son forgave each other before they died? No. In Act 5, Scene 2, lines 340 through 345, just for the record, he, your son Laertes says, He is justly served. It is a poison tempered by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. And do you think Hamlet killing you was considered murder? Yes. If other than him killing you, had he shown any aggression towards you or your family before this? I mean, Hamlet and Laertes always seemed to fight. They always butted heads, especially when it came to Ophelia. And as I said, he was full of inner demons. Okay, were there any hard feelings with Hamlet? Between me and him? Yes. Well, I, as I said, I was extremely protective of my daughter and I did not think his love to be pure. Do you believe that protection of your daughter is considered a hard feeling towards Hamlet or just toward protecting your daughter? I'd have to say a little bit of both. Okay. And did he have anything against your family? Was there anything you guys did to him? No, nothing I can recall. Okay, and so if he had nothing against your family, and as I read from the book, he said he really loved Ophelia, what do you think the motives of him killing you were? I could not say, I was rather taken aback by it. Okay, and so did Hamlet seek you out or did you seek Hamlet out? In which instance? The night of the murder, I'm sorry. I was hiding behind the heiress and then he stabbed me. Yes, but did you go to where he was or did he go to where you were? Do you mean when I went to Queen Gertrude's chamber? I'm sorry? Do you mean when I went to Queen Gertrude's chamber? Yes, when you were hiding behind the heiress. Yeah, I went to Queen Gertrude's chamber on my own accord. Okay, and where were you the night of the murder? In Queen Gertrude's chamber. Where? In her chamber? Behind the arrows. So to be clear, you snuck in behind the arrows to see Hamlet? Yes. Okay, and if Hamlet was not mad, what was the cause for you to be behind the arrows looking in, lurking in on the conversation with his mother? His mother was very worried about him and I was just trying to help. You're only trying to help? Yes. Okay, and in Act 3, Scene 3, Lines 29 through 31, Polonius says, My Lord, he's going to his mother's closet. Behind the arras, I'll convey myself to hear the process. Do you think that that sounds like you're only trying to help? I definitely wanted to be there in case something happened. Okay. And do you think hiding behind the curtain would have, or if you did not hide behind the curtain, would your daughter Ophelia still be alive today? I cannot say that with certainty. Do you believe that that was the main cause for her death? I would not say the main cause. But one of them? Yes. Okay, so do you regret hiding behind the arras now, now that you see that Hamlet was never planning to harm you and he never seeked you out to kill you, rather you seeked him out. 
and your daughter Ophelia quite possibly could still be alive today if it weren't for you hiding behind me at that arras. It would mean that I'd still be alive with my daughter, then I definitely would regret it. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. The prosecution counsel would like to call Queen Gertrude to the stand. Could you please state thy name and thy occupation for the court? I am Gertrude, Queen of Denmark. Thank you, Queen Gertrude. Hast thou been married? I was wed to King Hamlet until he hath passed. I am now bound to King Claudius in wedlock. Both are kings? My prior husband was King of Denmark. However, when he passed, I did marry his brother, Claudius. He then ascended to the throne and became king. Didst thou and King Hamlet have any children? Aye, our son is Prince Hamlet. Is he your only child? Aye. Did he know King Hamlet, your first husband? Aye, he died but only recently. I wed Claudius soon after. Could you please tell us how soon after? Twas soon enough to use as the food for King Hamlet's funeral as our own wedding feast. Did this have any effect on your son Hamlet? Oh, very much so. Would you please elaborate? He didn't appreciate the quick wedding at all. On several occasions, he's accused me of hypocrisy and betrayal, that I have berattled the throne. Hamlet approached his peak the hour I called him into my chambers one evening and acted aggressively toward me. He questioned my own judgment on my second husband, expressing anger toward him. I also air noticed his depression. He oft wore dark and dreary clothing, speaking in such sorrowful language. Was he angry and depressed? I. My son was very much changed. Was he so changed that his resulting actions could be considered insane? While in dispute, he claimed that he wasn't mad, challenging me to bring him to test. Twas as if he turned his crazed action on like a light. He spoke with sharp attention, despite such fiery passion. He claimed that it was not madness that he uttered, for later he instructed me to bid the king that he was essentially not in madness, but mad and craft. Do you believe Hamlet to be insane? I cannot bear to say it, and yet I must say that I do. What relationship do you and Hamlet have with Polonius? Polonius was the Lord Chamberlain of the King's Court and the father of the Lady Ophelia, whom Hamlet is seemingly affectionate of. Has Hamlet expressed his affections for Ophelia? He oft gave the lady letters expressing his feelings for her, and when Ophelia drowned herself, he grieved wholeheartedly and claimed that he was the only one who ever truly loved her. Ophelia drowned herself? Aye, the lady heir went completely insane, singing tush-tush songs. Dost thou know why? I do believe twas in response to Hamlet's outburst of fury toward her. He rather felt a powerful emotion that day. Outburst of fury. Aye, wherefore he was upset, I know us not. However, it clearly broke Ophelia's poor heart. Were you there to witness this instance? Nay, Polonius referred me to the occasion. Polonius was present for the outburst? I believe it so. Has he told you why Hamlet was visibly upset? Nay. Did you or anyone else inquire about Hamlet's recent behavior? I, my husband and I summoned Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to search at the issue. Do you know what they found? Nearly. It's not clear the reason for Hamlet's stout emotions. Please elaborate. After Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, uh, after Hamlet conversed with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, they reported to us that uh, Colonius, Pol uh, Polonius, Claudius, Ophelia, and I, that he feels himself distracted, and yet he will not speak of the cause. They explained that he was reluctant to respond truthfully to their inquiries. He avoided every question concerning his true state. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern also reported that he was unnaturally forcing his disposition and spoke freely in his replies. Anything else? No. 
Did you, Claudius, Polonius, and Ophelia suspect any reason behind his disposition? We hath believed twas his affections that caused his most unusual behavior. Is this the case? Polonius might think otherwise. Could you please give us a brief account of the murder, of Polonius, from your perspective? Aye. Polonius and myself had to plan to discover what's been bothering Hamlet. I would call him into my closet to confront him while Polonius hid behind an heiress to spy with his own eyes. All of a sudden, Hamlet came with bursting into the room, hurling accusation and insults at me, his own mother. The situation escalated. I was in fear for mine own life, and Polonius did cry from behind the heiress. I suppose Hamlet did mistake the voice as Claudius's and stabbed whoever was behind it. Polonius died then and thither. It was after this Hamlet told of me that he was only acting mad. Did Hamlet give you any indication as to why he went for the tapestry? He was trying to kill anyone who spied behind it. Yes, but why kill him? He believed it to be my beloved husband, Claudius. Hamlet desired to kill Claudius. Why, he despised the man. What makes you believe this? He expressed that wedding Claudius was a dishonor and betrayal to Denmark and to the king. He stood vo very loyally to his father. Which father? His first, King Hamlet. Did you ever learn anything about how your late husband died? Hamlet claimed that my beloved King Claudius was a vile, evil, sneaky murderer. He claimed that he was a murderer and a villain, a slave that is not twentieth part the tithe of my precedent lord, a vice of kings, a cut purse of the empire and the rule, that from a shelf the precious diadem stole and put it in his pocket. Is there truth in that accusation? I know it's not. But he was so vile in his tongue, my heart was cleft in two. Thank you, Queen Gertrude. No further question. Your Majesty, Queen Gertrude, do you stand ready for cross-examination? Aye. Good day, Gertrude. How do you do? I'm well, thank you. If you could please state your relationship to Hamlet and your role in the kingdom. Hamlet is my first and only son, and um, I am the Queen of Denmark. All right, and were you close to your son? Did you have a good relationship with your son? I would like to say so, yes. Awesome, and what was it like to have Hamlet as your son? Um, he was rather a very, he seemed to be quiet at first, and most of the time he was quiet and he was very logical. He was cool, calm, and collected. Um, however, when his father died, he, he, was, he fell into deep grief. So Hamlet changed due to his father passing? Yes. And did Hamlet change when you married his uncle Claudius? Yes, he expressed his disapproval of the marriage. And do you think that that was a good idea to marry his uncle right after his father passed? Looking back, I see the effects of it, but I do not regret it. And what kind of frustration and difficulty do you think this may have caused your son Hamlet? Just the... He just... Mm, he just didn't like it. He, he thought something was suspicious about Claudius and um, he compared uh, my husband and Claudius saying that my first husband, King Hamlet, was far superior to Claudius. And, <clears throat> and when did he begin to show signs of insanity? When? <clears throat> I do not recall. All right, and were you there? Were you there when the defendant stabbed Polonius? Yes, I was there. Did you think that Hamlet was mad? I cannot, I cannot bear to say it as any mother would about her son, but he did show incredible signs of unnatural behavior for his normal character. And I'm, I'm going to read a line from the play in Act 4, Scene 1, starting in line 35, if you can just tell me if you agree with this statement. Um, the king says, what Gertrude? How does Hamlet? And your response is, quote, mad as the sea and wind, when both contend. 
which is mightier. In his lawless fit, behind the arras, hearing something stir, whips out his rapier, cries a rat, a rat, and in his brainish apprehension, kills the unseen good old man. Does that sound correct to you and do you agree with that? Um, I did say it, yes. And do you think Claudius believed Hamlet was mad? Um, later on, he, I think so. I cannot say for sure. For the record again, I will read act, sorry, act four, scene one, line 35. This is when the king is still discussing matters with you about Polonius's death. The king says, quote, Hamlet in madness, half Polonius slain. Do you agree with that statement? I guess, yes. And do you think Hamlet behaved irrationally when he stabbed Polonius through the arras? I, I believe it was the cause of bundled up emotions um, and it all was an outflow then. Do you think it was irrational? I think murder is irrational in any case. And when Hamlet stabbed Polonius behind the arras, do you think he knew who it was? He believed it to be my husband, Claudius. He did? Yes. But he did not know who for sure was behind the arras because they were hidden, correct? Correct. All right. And when you were meeting with your son, Hamlet, was anyone else there after Polonius had died? No. Did Hamlet believe anyone else was there with you, both in the room? He did claim to have seen the ghost of his father, but I did not see it. So did you, you did not see this ghost. Did you hear it speak? No. Did Hamlet hear it speak? He did. He claimed to. And do you believe that Claudius killed your former husband? <sighs> In part. So you believe what Hamlet may have been telling you, that Claudius did kill your former husband? I have my hesitations to believe him, but for the most part I do. You believe Hamlet? Yes. Okay. Do you think it was irrational for your son, Hamlet, to be upset at Claudius in the way he was? No. And were Hamlet's actions and speech logical? No, not really. But when in the, um, when he was about to murder Polonius and afterwards, he, he did make some kind of sense. All right, and no further questions, Your Honor. The prosecution has no other witnesses to call at this time, and we rest our case. Very well. Uh, defense, are you ready to present your case? Yes, Your Honor. Then you may proceed. The defense counsel would like to call their first witnesses stand, Lady Ophelia. Good day, Ophelia, how do you do? I'm well, thank you. If you could please state your name and relationship to Hamlet. I am the Lady Ophelia, former lover of thine young Prince Hamlet. But before our love could ever be affirmed, it was torn apart by the sudden death of his father, the king. His love for me seemed to waver thenceforth and was torn apart by his irrational fits of madness. In a mad rage, he murdered my dear father from behind an arras, although I know he did not know it was him. Whence I learnt of this, I myself went mad in confusion and sadness and ended mine own life in the river. My dearest Hamlet was not well. He was in a fit of insanity whence he committed the crime. I pray you, open thine eyes and see. My Hamlet could not have committed the crime other than by reason of insanity. What was your initial relationship to Hamlet? He hath made many tenders of his affections toward me. And 
How did that change? He hath started to change early on. I noticed it on one particular evening. I was sewing in my closet when Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all unbraced, no hat upon his head, his face as pale as his shirt, his knees knocking against each other, as if he'd been loosed out of hell to speak horrors, he comes before me. Mad for thy love? My lord, I do not know, but truly I did fear it. And what said he? He grabbed my wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand thus o'er his brow, he falls to such perusal of my face as he would draw it. That done, he lets me go, and with his head o'er his shoulder turned. Then he seemed to find his way out without his eyes. Had you given him any hard words at that time? No, but as my father commanded, I did repel his letters and denied his access to me. Please tell me what you know about Hamlet's father and his relationship with him. I do not know much, but from whence I could tell they hath a close and deep relationship. I do believe it hit him when he passed. After Hamlet's father passed away, did it change the defendant Hamlet? It did. In what ways? He hath started to pull away. He seemed quite melancholy for a time. I did truly feel for him. Did you love Hamlet? I did. I truly did. Thank you, Lady Ophelia. No further questions. My witness now stands ready for cross-examination. Good morning, Ophelia. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Is it true that you believe Hamlet to be insane? Yes. Can you please elaborate on why you believe him insane? He was acting irrational, and he changed. He didn't used to be like this. When did he start to act like this? After his father passed. He started so, acting differently. Differently, like how? Like, was he sad and depressed or moody? Yes, in a way. He started having fits of madness, and he yelled at me and proclaimed that he did not love me. Could this have been a result of his depression or anger towards his father's death? It probably was. So what does thou agree due to the events of his life that at the time he was depressed? Yes, he was. Um, what else did the noble king say of Hamlet's behavior towards you after spying on the two of you? I don't know. They spied on us? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, go ahead, defense counsel. Would you like to elaborate? I believe. In the play, go ahead, defense. In the play at some point, I can't remember exactly where, but there was a conversation after which uh, Polonius spied on Ophelia and Hamlet. And uh, he said something of it. I can't remember exactly what, but. Defense, what's the nature of your objection? I do believe that that was hearsay and lack of personal knowledge. Prosecutor, what is your response? I am unaware of where it is in the play, but I know there is an instance. Okay, um, why don't you move on to your next question? Was this the only time that thou ever saw any outbursts of Hamlet's madness, like after the night uh, where he came to your chamber? No, he started acting strangely early on. Thank you, no further questions. The defense counsel would like to call my next witness to stand, Horatio, our loyal companion. Good day, Horatio. How do you do? Well, I'm the only witness that is alive, so I'd say I'm pretty good. Very well. <laughs> Please say your name and relationship to the defendant, Hamlet. 
I'm Horatio, Hamlet's friend, and I keep watch at his gate, which is what sparked all this madness. For it was I who decided to reveal the fact to Hamlet that while on watch, I saw the ghost of his deceased father. Maybe if I had not told him, he would not have been seduced by irrationality, but I cannot change my actions. I do know to be true that Hamlet left his encounter with the ghost a changed man. From that point on, he descended into paranoia, which drove his craziness to the point of mentally breaking. Hamlet was lost, his mind gone, only his body left. At the climax of his madness, he stabbed Polonius through a curtain from where hence he was spying on Hamlet, killing him. But Hamlet would not have committed the crime for any reason other than insanity. And how did Hamlet's father passing change him? It was tragic. Not only did his father's death break him, but he was haunted by him, literally. What could you mean by that? Well, when I was on watch, I saw Hamlet's father in ghost form. It harrowed me with fear and wonder. And once the morning rose, we broke our watch. And by my advice, we decided to impart what we had seen that night to young Hamlet. How did Hamlet take you speaking of the ghost? He begged me to tell him everything and pestered me with questions. I told him the ghost was armed from head to toe and that seemed to worry Hamlet. He insisted he would watch with us that night. Did Hamlet lay eyes on the ghost? Yes. In detail, if you please, how did seeing the ghost of his beloved father affect him? Well, he wanted to follow the ghost when it beckoned to him, but I was worried. What if it tempted him towards the flood or to the, summit, or to the dreadful summit of the cliffs where he would quietly bury him? I told Hamlet my concerns, but he refused to listen, almost like a madman on a mission to follow the ghost. What do you mean by madman? Well, his father's death changed him. He was consumed with his father's death and honestly, who could blame him? But once he laid eyes on the ghost, that sealed it. His imagination made him go crazy and the ghost lured him further into insanity. And what did the ghost say exactly? I do not know. I never heard the ghost speak. In fact, I think the only person to hear it was Hamlet. Almost like he was so far gone that his mind was playing tricks on him. No one, not you, not anyone else there, heard the ghost speak? Correct. What about when you witnessed the ghost before Hamlet? Did you hear it speak then? No, I did not. Do you believe the sighting of the ghost added to Hamlet's craziness? Without a doubt, yes. But you also saw the ghost, so why didn't you go crazy? Well, the ghost was Hamlet's dead father. I bear no attachment to it, so I was not mentally entangled with the figure like Hamlet was. Why did Hamlet's father's de death take such a toll on him mentally? Well, you must keep in mind, it wasn't just his father's death. The threat of war loomed over them and his uncle forcefully replaced his father with himself. How was Hamlet supposed to handle his grief if Claudius essentially removed his father's legacy? Also, not only did Claudius take his throne, he also took his mother. Believe me, the betrayal was unfathomable. So when Hamlet discovered Claudius' secret, it was too much for him to handle. As Hamlet's friend, in your opinion, did his mental state spiral? Oh, absolutely. He was a different person. He was not in the right mindset, but the king and queen were so selfish to look over his growing pain that it led to the killing of Polonius. Let us discuss of Polonius. Do you think Hamlet was responsible for Polonius's death? No. As I mentioned before, his imagination made him go crazy. Also, from a guard's point of view, I would like to point out that anyone who is being watched, especially by a supposed to be murderer, would be uneasy. He was just protecting himself and his mother and would have never been put in that situation if not for Claudius. And did Hamlet ever say to you that he was going to fake being mad? He did say something along the lines of that, but his words were wild and whirling long before. As Hamlet's close friend, I would know my friend was mad and he was mad. So did Hamlet fake being mad? If that was his plan, he failed miserably. 
I know without a doubt that Hamlet was crazy due to his actions. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. My witness now stands ready for cross-examination. Good morning, Horatio. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well. Didst thou spy the ghost of our late King Hamlet? God rest his soul. I did. And you said the ghost never spoke to you, never spoke to you, correct? Correct. In your honor. Uh, yes, what's your objection? That was a leading question. Um, the, the defense is allowed to ask more um, leading questions than a direct on cross. So I'll overrule that. Is it true that the ghost tried to speak to you before the cock began to crow? I believe we were trying to get it to speak to us. It never did. I was a little unsure what its motives were. What did the ghost mean to you? Will you repeat the question? What did the ghost mean to you? Did you bear any attachment to the ghost or anything? Mentally, no, I did not. Mentally? Yes. As I mentioned before, Hamlet was mentally entangled with the figure because it was his dead father. I did have respect for it, you could say, because he was the dead king of the land I served. But other than that, no, I had no attachments to it. So was Lord Hamlet sad or depressed after the passing of his father? What is the difference? Was he, uh, was his mood changed in such a way where he was just sad and depressed and went about his life just uh, looking at it through that lens? He was definitely sad and depressed, but there was something else there. Was Lord Hamlet sad or depressed at the as at the marriage between his mother and his uncle he was sad depressed and angry i'd say dost thou agree that because of the past occurrences in lord hamlet's life that he was sad depressed and moody yes i would say he was so and was his friend and was thy friend outraged at his uncle claudius was I outraged? Was your friend outraged? Oh, my friend. I definitely would say after finding out he killed his father, Hamlet was not on good terms with Claudius. Would you please uh, just recall to us the night that Hamlet told you he was simply going to act mad? Yes. So he had told us he was going to simply act mad but long before that, his words were wild and whirling to me. And I do not believe that what he spoke was truth. I believe he was already mad at that point. How did thou believe he was mad at that point? Did he ever bear any instances or any, or do you have any examples of ways that he was acting mad before then? Yes, due to his, his actions, his, his pursuit of the ghost, it was, it was not smart. He did not listen to what I had to say. He put himself in danger. He was just determined to follow this ghost, this being, without any, any logical reason to me. But would you call that an outburst of madness? I wouldn't say an outburst. I would say it was irrational, which would mean he was mad. Or was he simply just trying to get the facts from the ghost? It could be all, honestly. He definitely wanted the truth, but I think the truth just broke him. Would you please uh, elaborate on the letter sent to you by Lord Hamlet? Do you remember what he said? I do not recall word for word. Okay. Would you mind if I read what Lord Hamlet said in the letter for you? You may go ahead. It says, Horatio, when thou shalt have overlooked this, give these fellows some means to the king. They have letters for him. Ere we were two days old at sea, a pirate of very warlike appointment gave us chase. Finding ourselves too slow of sail, we put on a compelled valor, and in the grapple, I boarded them. On the instant, they got clear of our ship, so I alone became their prisoner. 
they have dealt with me like thieves of mercy, but they knew what they did. I am to I am to do a good turn for them. Let the king have the letters I sent and repair thou to me with as much speed as thou wouldest fly death. I have words to speak in thine ear will make thee dumb. Yet they are much too light of the, for the bore of the matter. These good fellows will bring thee where I am. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern hold their course for England. Of them I have much to tell thee. Farewell. He that knoweth thine, Hamlet. Do these seem like the words of a madman? Quite honestly, I do not know because his behavior was so erratic. Sometimes he made more sense than other times. Do you, uh, do you recall what the Prince Hamlet told you before he passed, before his uh, passing? He, he didn't want me to be sad and he wanted me to go on. So did Hamlet ever bring back up to you the fact that he was simply acting crazy besides at the beginning when he told you he was gonna act crazy? From my recollection, no. Would thou mind if I read act five, scene two, the first couple lines in there? You may go ahead. So in this, Hamlet says, so much for this, sir. Now shall you see the other. You do remember all the circumstance. And you said, remember it, my Lord. Does that circumstance being he was going to act sane. And you said, remember it, my Lord. As in, how could you forget? Is that correct? I, will you repeat that? Sorry, it cut out. So in this, you said it, remember it, my Lord. As in, how could I forget, correct? If that's what I said, then yes. Thank you, no further questions. The defense counsel will now like to call their last witness to stand, defendant Hamlet. Hello, Hamlet, how do you do? As fair as one may in these times. Please state your name and role in the kingdom. I am Prince Hamlet, son of the late King of Denmark. My father, was murdered by my uncle, who now sits upon his throne. Not more than two months post his passing, my own mother, Gertrude, bewed my uncle. I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of his wits and traitorous gifts, O oh, wicked wits and gifts, that have the power so to seduce one to his shameful lust, the will of the most seeming virtuous queen. Claudius, my uncle, robbed me of my rightful place on that throne. Oh, foul beast, how I wished to rule and to lead. But no, Claudius stole it, stole it all, my father, my mother, my crown, and my kingdom. Please inform us about your parents. My father, my dear and beloved father, whose very name I do bear, was murdered and hardly had two months passed when my mother Gertrude and my uncle Claudius were wed. In what ways did the wedding of your mother and uncle, now father, Claudius, affect you? The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish the marriage tables. My soul had never known such treachery. Was there anything left unresolved with your deceased father? And thus was he sleeping and by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, cut off, even in the households of his sin. No reckoning made, but sent to his account with all his imperfections upon his head. 
If you feel comfortable, please tell me about the ghost of your father. Having been left lifeless by his own brother, my father's spirit haunted me day and night, revealing to me in a voice as clear as the light of day, revealing to me the account of my uncle's murderous betrayal. So you're telling me and everyone else here, you saw and heard the ghost speak to you? Of nothing am I more certain. Could you tell me what the ghost hath spoken to you? Murder, 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 and more murder. And what murder exactly? A murder of my beloved father. And how did finding out the murder of your father make you feel? I, thou poor ghost, while his memory holds a seat upon this distracted globe, remember thee. Yea, from the tables of my memory, I'll wipe away every trivial record. O oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I am sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle, there you are. Now to my word it is. Adieu, adieu, remember me, I hath sworn. It. Were you upset at Claudius? Was I? Was I upset at Claudius? Have you not listened to a single word I have uttered here today? I felt nothing for my uncle, nothing but wrath, but rage, but anger, nothing but vengeance. After hearing of the murder of your father, did it compel you to murder Polonius? 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 Who is Polonius? The person you murdered? I, Polonius, viewed as an attacker, viewed as a figure entering in, hidden behind a curtain, viewed as someone seeking to harm my mother or I, I did not intend to, no, no, it was only out of the paranoia of my mind, out of the delusion that so often accosts me, only out of fear for the life of my mother or myself. Only then did I strike. Who was there when the murder was committed? Only my mother, Gertrude, and I. Were you aware the person behind the curtain was Polonius when you committed this bloody deed? No, 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 I, I knew it not. Bloody deed, bloody deed, bloody deed. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry his brother. What transpired after this event took place? I, I took to yelling, shouting, screaming at my mother, imploring her by God's good graces to dare to fathom the immeasurable crimes my uncle had committed. And then he appeared, my father, or at the very least, whatever 
spectral remnant of him still lingered upon this cursed earth. There he stood, never speaking, ever staring. Did your mother see the ghost as well? No, no, no. She saw him not, and for it thought me only the more mad. And going back to Polonius, do you know how his death affected his daughter, Lady Ophelia? Heartbroken. She was heartbroken. Screams of agony echoed from the kingdom's every wall. And her end soon approached. Lady Ophelia murdered herself because of pain, because of grief, because of me, because I told her that I had never loved her. And what was your relationship to Ophelia? I loved Ophelia. 40,000 brothers could not, with all their quantity of love, make up my sum. Had you any knowledge of her madness? Alas, no. I only realized after she had ended her life. So you realize she was mad? What, what does it matter if ever I did? Only too late. And in the end, who killed you and how? Laertes, the vengeful son of Polonius, the avenging brother of Ophelia, with the poisoned tip of his blade did lay me to rest. And one last question. Are you mad? What I have done, that might your nature, honor, and exception so roughly awake, I here proclaim twas madness. Was it Hamlet wronged Polonius? No, never Hamlet. For if Hamlet from himself be taken away, and when he is not himself, does wrong Polonius? Hamlet, Hamlet does it not. No, no, Hamlet denies it. Who does it then? His madness. If it be so, Hamlet is of the faction that is wronged. His madness, poor Hamlet's undoing. Thank you, Hamlet. No further questions, Your Honor. My witness now stands ready for cross-examination. Good morning, Prince Hamlet. How are you today? I fear, I fear I am not well. How did your father's death affect you? I, I most miserably so. What son would not yearn for his father after his untimely passing? And yet his murder at the hands of Claudius and my mother's betrayal, I, I, it, it affected me most terribly so. The health of my body, of my mind, How did thou feel, how did I, how did you feel about your uncle? What was your relationship with him like? I hated my uncle. To kill his own brother, my father, and then to marry his brother's wife, the very queen of Denmark. The betrayal I felt from my uncle, from my mother, 
I could not bear. I hated my uncle. I hated him. I wished for his crimes to be exposed. I wished for vengeance against Claudius. After your discourse with your deceased father, didst thou seek a way to confirm his words? I, that I did. I thought, perhaps a play, a play in the very manner of my father's death might evoke a most condemning reaction from my uncle, and that it did. Didst thou ever question the ghost's words? In a way, in a sort, yes, I did. I wondered if perhaps it was not my father, but instead some trick played upon me by the devil himself to twist my mental state and to turn me ever more towards madness. Did any other individual ever see the ghost? Aye, that they did. My beloved friend and greatest companion, good Horatio, he saw the ghost before I ever did. It was he who informed me of my father's lingering presence. On the night in question, who did thou believe was hidden behind the heiress? Alas, I believed perhaps it might very well be my uncle Claudius. Hiding, scheming, plotting, spying on me and my mother. With what he had done to my father, how could I trust him? And had it been my uncle Claudius, I would have felt no remorse driving my blade through that curtain through my uncle. So when thou stabbed through the heiress, thou meant to kill whatever was behind it. If it be Claudius, if it be Claudius, then yes. Now, but it, but was it Claudius behind the tapestry? Alas, and most unfortunately, no. Was Polonius ever violent or ever a threat towards you? No, alas, he was not. He did not wish for me and his daughter, Lady Ophelia, to ever be together. But no, no violence ever came to me at the hand of Polonius. How was he a threat if he was merely crying out, help, help? He, he might very well have been a threat, be he my uncle as I mistaked him or any other spy sent by my uncle to watch the very conversation between my mother and I Alas, he might very well have been a threat, though I knew it not. What did you tell your beloved mother of your so-called madness? Dost thou remember? What, what was thy question once more? Dost thou remember what thy said of thy mental state with thy mother? No. No, I, I fear I remember it not. Would you mind if I read, read it for you? Proceed. On the night in question, you told your mother, you said, that I am essentially not in madness, but mad and craft. So you said you are not mad, correct? I said both that I was mad and I was not. 
When did thou say thou was mad? In craft. But mad in thy mind? In my mind and in my craft. Alas, are they but not yet? That's merely in craft. And what, what does thou mean by in craft? Mad in thy actions, but not mad in mine. Correct? I fear, I fear I was, I was both mad and, and yet I was not in my actions and in my craft. Perhaps no reason here, and yet perhaps reason there. Did the king, your uncle Claudius, ever give ear to your conversations with your mother? Alas, I, f I fear he might very well have. Would you please elaborate on the letter sent by you to your uncle? The letter? Which, which letter in question? The letter sent by you to your uncle. You sent one to your friend Horatio and you sent one to your uncle. Could you please elaborate on the one sent to your uncle? Yes, yes, I, I do recall, and yet, alas, I do not. The sending of the letter, yes, I remember it, but it's, its contents, alas, they avail me. Thank you. Well, would you mind if I read it for you? Yes, yes, go on, evoke my memory. It says, high and mighty, you shall know I am set naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall first, asking your pardon thereunto, recount the occasion of my sudden and more strange return. Hamlet. Are those the words of a madman? If they be my words, then yes. Would you please recount what you told your friend Horatio before all of this took place, when thou told him thou was going to act mad? Yes, yes, alas, I said, I said very well that I might play the fool in order to expose my uncle's crimes, but alas, in doing so, I fear only the more mad I did actually become. And then will you please recount your conversation you had with Horatio shortly before your demise? What did thou say? What, what, did, what did I thou say? For I remember it not as with many, all too many things. Would you like me to read for you? Aye, aye. So, it's, so it says, so much for this, sir. Now shall you see the other. You do remember all the circumstance. What circumstance? The circumstance of my plight against my uncle, of this this maddening plot into which I had been thrown, my uncle, my mother, my lover and her father, her brother, my own dear and beloved friend. I, this, this most terrible, this most awful circumstance. Was thy seeming madness part of this circumstance, thy acting mad a part of this circumstance? At the very first, yes, yes it was. And yet, acting, no, acting I fear it is no longer. Though alas, perhaps I wish, I dearly wish that I could still be acting. For then perhaps more reason would have accounted for my actions and perhaps, 
perhaps I could be free of this, free of this all. My plight against my father, my, my dead lady Ophelia, all those around me who have died. Oh, how I wish that I had only played this madness. For perhaps then, perhaps then, I would be in a better place. But back to the night and murder, but regardless of what happened, you believed it was Claudius behind the tapestry, correct? I believed that perhaps it was. However, be it not Claudius, be it any other spy, be it any other murderer, then I fear I have no regret for their death. For but their thou death. desire to kill, correct? If it be, if it be the murderous trickster who I thought it was, then yes, that, that I did. So dost thou feel any remorse for thy action? Alas, I, I had no fight, no plight against dear Polonius. I, I had no intention for his life to be taken. I only wish, I only wish that my madness had perhaps escaped me for a moment. Perhaps even then I would have thought a little more. Perhaps, perhaps if Polonius had never been hiding behind the curtain in the first place. And perhaps if my if the paranoia that had driven me to defend myself, then perhaps Polonius would still be with us here today. So thou feels remorse for thy actions. Alas, the slightest bit, only, only for Polonius. Thank you, Hamlet, no further questions. <laughs> The defense has no other witnesses and we rest our case. Very well, prosecutor, are you ready for your closing arguments? Aye. You may proceed. Lords and ladies of this illustrious court, today we have heard the facts of a case regarding the future monarchy of our beloved country, Denmark. Hamlet, on the night in question, murdered the loyal, innocent, bystander, Polonius, who was merely hiding behind the tapestry, granting ear to the prince and queen's conversation. And he merely cried out, help, help. He never acted in any way. But Hamlet, in his anger and rage, stabbed through the tapestry, believing it to be his uncle, Claudius. He feels no remorse. He meant to kill whoever was behind it, believing it to be Claudius. Through the facts of this case, I hope that I have shown you that Hamlet hath been, been merely putting on a false act. He told his friend Horatio before all of the occurrences that he was merely going to act mad and brought it up again shortly before his demise saying, do you remember that? To which Horatio replied, remember it my lord, as in how could I forget? His mother believed that his madness was turned on like a light, like that. She said that he was not mad, and Hamlet himself said he was not mad in mind, but mad in craft. Polonius was no threat to Hamlet. Hamlet must be held responsible for his actions. He is no madman. He is crafty and cunning. Polonius deserves justice. Hamlet is no madman. He hath been merely been putting on a false act. I pray that thou would seek justice and thy rule. Hamlet is guilty. He is guilty. Thank you, prosecutor. Uh, defense counselor, are you ready to proceed with your closing arguments? Yes, Your Honor. 
You may proceed. I and my witnesses have presented to you throughout this grave trial that Hamlet had no motive to murder dear Polonius. And the means and opportunity were only provided by Polonius himself. Hamlet began normal and slowly but surely spiraled down into insanity. His dear father passed. Mother bewed Claudius, his uncle, just a short two months later and used the food from the funeral for the wedding. Saw his father's ghost, the one whom he loved died and he discovered the unsettling truth of his father's death. His uncle killed his father. I pray you open thine eyes. Hamlet was insane. It is said that traumatic experiences can rock a person, hijack a person, and disable a person. They can conspire to make a person crazy. If Hamlet twas not mad, insane, uncontrollable, or wild, he would have been controllable, and everything he did and spoke should have made logical sense. But I've presented to you today, throughout each witness, I have his mother, who knew him best, call her own son mad and illogical. I have Polonius say when asked were there other ways he could have been mad, say, and I quote, probably most certainly was mad in other ways than love. As the prosecuting side argues, he was merely just acting mad and putting on a show. If this were the case, do you really think he would continue to act mad after he was sent away and after many people's deaths occurred, especially after his love, Ophelia, died? Hamlet had no hard feelings towards anyone but Claudius. He was not after anyone else. You cannot tell me or convince me or anyone else here that he was only acting mad after all that happened to him. Dear Hamlet lost everything. Lost his father, lost trust, lost his mother because Claudius captivated her lost friends, lost love, lost hope, lost support, lost everything. So don't tell me he was only acting mad. No, he was grieving. He was frustrated, attempting to cope with everything revengeful, angry, emotions filled every inch of Hamlet and all of the emotions tied together created a madman. Honorable judge, faithful jury, and lovely people of the court, Hamlet was mad and he said it in both mind and craft. I have shown you without a shadow of a doubt that Hamlet is innocent by reason of insanity. I pray you open thine eyes and see everything that he was insane. Thank you for your time, your lending ears, and your consideration. I ask you consider all the true facts that I've executed to you all today and that you say that he is innocent by reason.
reason on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, prosecutors and defense. Um, we're gonna take a 15 minute recess while the jury uh, proceeds with their verdict. Jury, it is now your responsibility to decide whether or not Hamlet had criminal responsibility for the killing of Polonius at the time of the murder, or if he is innocent of this crime due to insanity. I'm going to ask, let me let my video back. I'm going to ask if all of the participants, Hamlet and friends, if all of you would exit out of this meeting and leave only the jury, then in 15 minutes, uh, come back and I will let you in. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, so um, guys, if y'all want, y'all can uh, put your audio and your video on, challenge four. All right, super. So um, I'm gonna give y'all a chance to uh, do all your deliberation without me listening in. Um, hey, Ben, haven't seen you in a while. Hi. Hey, ben. Um, okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to step out, but I'll still be able to hear y'all if, if, I guess if you need something, Preston, if y'all need something, you can always yell at me. So we all need to do now some time to add up all your scores, send those to, or give those to Ashton. She's going to do the total tally and y'all take a few minutes to decide guilty or insane. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. Just give me a shout out if you need something. Okay. Um, let's just do the scores first. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it would be easiest if we add up the scores from each section. So like First, we'll do the defense opening address, and then you add that up, and then we each say our number to Ashton, maybe. Or should we just I, should we, should we say our, all our entire totals for the entire prosecution and defense? And just yeah, just that add up? your own points and then send the whole total to me, yeah. and I'll add all. The I already points. added my whole total thing. I just did it as we, as we. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Again, as we were finishing up. Should I send them to you, Ashton, or should I just tell you? Either way. Okay. I'm just going to text them to you because it's easier. Yeah, that might be easier. Okay. I always score too high when we do these things. Like, <laughs> I know, because I... It's like I feel bad giving them like super low. Some mm -hmm. of them I did. Depending. Some of them I was like. Oh, Calvin was so good. Oh my gosh, he was amazing. He was really good. Mm -hmm. He has the right voice for it, the like, the pacing and like the tone, even like all his responses. Because sometimes it's easy in like the direct testimony to, to like do your lines, but then when you have to like answer the questions, you can like forget about it. So that was really good. Yeah. You really sounded crazy sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Anna, the picture you asked me to send you, did it come through yesterday? 
Yes. Okay. Sorry. I thought I said thanks, but I guess I did. Um, I was just curious because uh, my phone's been giving me issues and not working properly. Got it. Yeah, our internet has been awful, and it's a lot of times I'll send stuff and it just sits there for like a good like 30 minutes. Hey guys, so before we end, I, I want to get all y'all on screen and I want to take a screenshot of it so that we can put that into our um, mock trial page. Oh, there y'all are. Nice. Okay, y'all can keep talking if you want, but I'm, I'm fixing to take a, a screenshot. I'm fixing to take a screenshot. Okay, ready? Let's see. How do I do it? Command Shift Four. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Perfect. Okay, thanks. Y'all keep going. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we were in the thick of it, guys. Oh yeah. Whew. So yeah. much discussion. All right. Yeah. Much really struggling here. Be so fun. 